Cast Nerdcast. Welcome to the Buckass Nerdcast, the only place on the internet where we measure the angle of our dangle with a protractor. This is your host, Trimmer Death, and I will be talking about uh, a lot of uh, fucking Halo. Oh, that's the first fuck. Second fuck. Third. Oh, I can't just keep doing it like that. I have to have legitimate fucks. Legit fucks for legit folks. I was originally going to do a, um episode about my favorite movies of the year, and I still want to do that, but we'll see how much time we've got after I get done talking about all the Halo stuff. As I said last uh, episode, I was going to get a uh, copy of the Master Chief Collection for Christmas. I thought I was going to have to get it myself, a little bit of my money and GameStop cards, which I actually didn't get any GameStop cards this year. Stupid family, and they're not giving me non-specific gift card stuff. That didn't happen. But my brother-in-law, thank you, David, Black Ninja Sama, get, got me Master Chief Collection. Hell, one of my friends got me the Borderlands pre-sequel. And I wasn't even planning on getting that for a while, because Sarah and I, or sorry, Crimson and I played a lot of that. Uh, the first and the second one. So I was really happy to get that, but we didn't have a baby when we were playing it before. It's going to be hard to play through that. Uh, with each other. I may have to just do it myself, so... Wah, wah, wah. But yeah, I got the Master Chief Collection. And, yeah, so I ins I inserted the disc, and I started playing it, and... Oh, wait, no. That would be if I lived last generation. What happened was, I inserted the disc, it asked me to install it, and it froze up for an hour. I had to quit out, uninstall it, reinstall it, froze up at 2% again for like a half hour, had a, uh, had a troubleshoot on the internet that took a while, and it said, disconnect your computer from the internet, and then uh, install just the disk, because apparently I was installing the disk and the 18 gigabyte update, which was supposed to fix, uh, which was supposed to fix the uh, various problems with multiplayer. I did that, and it installed, and when I tried to install the update, it malfunctioned because Xbox Live went out because of the hell hacking deal. Merry Christmas. It took me 36 hours in between sleeping and doing Christmas stuff and trying to reinstall it over and over again before I could play a second of the fucking game. 36 fucking hours, when all I wanted to do was stick it in the console and play some Halo with my brother-in-law. Couldn't fucking do it. Couldn't fucking do it. Nope. Sorry. So, after I got all that shit done, it took me... Uh, let me rephrase that. It took me like 26 hours to do that. And then, for the next couple of hours, I was trying to get games to match up on Xbox Live, which it wouldn't do. So, and this was after, this is after the hacking thing, this is after they supposedly fixed it. So I restarted the console, I unplugged it, I restarted my router, I restarted my modem, did that several times, played through some Halo 2 anniversary levels, came back to, uh, came back to multiplayer, and then it finally matched up a game. And then it wouldn't do it again for like half an hour, and then it finally matched up a game. And I did this for a little while. It works a little bit better now, but it still is very touchy. It's still like, oh, well, I'm not going to match up Big Team. I might match up Team Slayer, but eh, I'm not going to match up Big Team. So I have to quit out, which I actually discovered how to quit things on Xbox One. Because usually with 360, you just have to reset the console, either by physically getting up and turning it off. Same thing with the Wii U. But you can't do that with the Xbox One. It goes to sleep. So I may be a fucking idiot, but I was unplugging the Xbox One to reset it, and I figured out that if you go to, if you minimize the screen, and then press start or menu, it will have an option to quit, which is basically restarting the software, so <laughs> I, <laughs> I've been doing that for like, I don't know, like three months or six months, occasionally when Netflix froze up, when I could have just done the quit thing, that's embarrassing, so I'm sure someone out there is like, you fucking idiot, well, sorry. I didn't know that that was a thing, so now I do. I mean, I know it's a thing now that I don't have to pull a cord out of the back of my Xbox One to restart it. So, aside from all of that shit, how is the Master's... That. How... <laughs> aside from all of that shit, how is the Master Chief Collection? Say that five times fast. How is the Master Chief Collection? 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 <laughs> See, if I could talk like that all the time, I'd have a lot less editing. Edit, let, let, see, look at that. I'd have a lot less editing to do. How is it? 
I haven't played any, uh, I haven't played anything except Halo 2 Anniversary as far as campaigns are concerned. I know they added Spartan Ops and whatnot, but all of that I played pretty recently. Even CEA I played recently, which is the first Halo remastered. I'll call it CEA a lot, Combat Evolved Anniversary. Uh, some people don't know, might not know what that is, so CEA is Halo 1 in HD. I didn't play any of that, though I heard it was ported from the PC version, and it's not the version that's on 360, which is just really bizarre, but... So Halo 2 Anniversary. It's pretty good. I remember last episode I talked about how Nintendo tends to do really interesting things with colors and making them pop. The Halo 2 Anniversary version really does that a lot. Like, if you if you don't know, in Halo 1 Anniversary, Halo CEA... When you switch between the HD graphics and the old Xbox original graphics, I was going to call it Xbox One. You can't call it that anymore. It's Xbox original. The original Xbox graphics, there's like a five to seven second delay. The screen will turn completely black while you still can, you're still technically doing things in the game. But the whole screen will go black for like seven seconds and then it'll load up the new graphics or the old graphics, depending on which way you're going. And this, instantaneous. You can just switch between uh, original Halo 2 and the Anniversary Edition, and I find myself—I uh, <clears throat> find myself doing this a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot. I always want to know what it looks like. Where in CEA, I was like, I don't want to wait for that shit to load. I have to be in a safe spot to do it. You don't have to be in a safe spot because you can just switch it back and forth with the press of a button, and it's instant. They've done such really interesting things with the lighting and the colors. Like, things will be burning, and there'll be, like, this really bright orange color, and they'll just pop out of the background, and the shotgun has the green aiming on it. But Like, it did in the original version, but it's really bright, and it's always, like, lit up. It's not, um, I guess it was just colored green in the old one, but now it's lit up. Everything just has so much more detail, and it's really pretty to look at. It still has all the problems that Halo 2 did, but I'm really glad upon basically having a new version of Halo 2 to review that people appreciate that game now. I remember I had a... That was one of the first games I had pre-ordered. It was either that or Mortal Kombat Deception I had pre-ordered. And I had to work at Walmart. I was working at Walmart back then. Oh, that doesn't make me feel super fucking old. I was working at Walmart, and I could not go get a copy of it at midnight because I worked till 1 a.m. that day, which is weird because I never worked till 1 a.m. at Walmart. But I did. I did that day. Uh, I think I volunteered for some reason. Who do I see coming up with, like, a stack of five Halos? Uh, Three Dozer, before he and I were really, really good friends. We were more acquaintances back then. Like, he lived near me, and I knew his brother from working at Holiday World. If you don't know what Holiday World is, it's an Indiana thing. Look at the fuck up. Here comes Three Dozer with his stepbrother and a group of people with Halo 2 in tow. And oddly enough, despite the fact that... Three Dozer lived close to me. I couldn't get high-speed cable internet, and he could. So they were playing Halo 2 online, and I, I, would, I didn't play it online a lot until, like, 2007, before Halo 3 came out. I was playing it uh, local with people, and then at my friend, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call him Darth Weasel. I don't even know if he has an Xbox Live account anymore. I haven't physically seen him in, like, six years. But original best friend, well, not my original best friend, but my, my best friend throughout high school, Darth Weasel, he, uh, the internet connection, and we had some free Xbox Live, and we played it a bunch, and me and my friend, uh, Brad, I don't know Brad's gamer tag at the top of my head, oh, it's Brad Almighty, me and Brad Almighty, uh, good way of hiding his real name, Darth Weasel played it online, but seeing that game now, and having to go get it the, the after I woke up the next day, everybody was pissed that you had to be the arbiter half the game, people were pissed that, they were just pissed off about campaign, for some reason. And I, I never really got it, because you had to be the Arbiter. And I like being the Arbiter. That's one of my favorite things in the game. My Arbiter actually has a story arc. Master Chief doesn't. He hasn't he has no story arc whatsoever. Uh, he has one in Halo 3. He has a big one in Halo 4. He doesn't really have an arc in the first game, either. It's just, like, maybe because he had to kill uh, Keys. Spoiler alert, uh, 13-year-old game, you had to kill the Admiral. I mean, a little bit in 3 because they had to save Cortana. This was the Arbiter's game. This was the Arbiter's game. The Arbiter does shit as far as character development in Halo 3. So Halo 2 is the Arbiter's game. And, oh, the CG scenes are beautiful. They I, they didn't have CG scenes in CEA, I think. If I'm wrong about that, correct me. But these are the same people who did the 
CG scenes in Halo Wars, which, oh, that's such an underrated game. I fucking love Halo Wars. I fucking, I have all the achievements on it. Me and Zelda Man just beat the shit out of that game. That was, <clears throat> that and CE, or that and uh, ODST is one of the best experiences he and I had on a multiplayer Halo game. I feel like 3 had such back and forth feelings about when we played online. More on Halo 3 and my feelings about that later in the uh, podcast. But, or Nerdcast, because this isn't on iTunes, so. I'm glad uh, Halo 2 is appreciated now, the, the single player. What do I about, think about the multiplayer of, M, uh, of MCC? The multiplayer is really interesting, because one thing, that apparently they had a Halo 4 list before, they really need to bring that back, because I really just want to play Halo 4 maps once in a while. That being said, when it does match up a game, it's pretty fun. They don't have all the rankings up, and I don't really care about that. I don't play it enough to give a shit about my ranking right now. But I'm sure there are a lot of people who do. The one list that is ranked is just, no offense to people who are really good at Halo, but really fucking good people who don't play other games and are playing as teams and are just whipping my ass. Big Team's a little bit easier because most people don't join big teams on Big Team. Haha. <clears throat> it's mostly just like pairs of people joining it and single people, so it's a little more chaotic and I like that. Uh, the Rum Halo 2 Anniversary Rumble is pretty fun, though I hate, this is going to be contentious for a lot of people too, I hate the BR, I hate the Battle Rifle. It's too fucking powerful. It just is. Now, disclaimer behind that, it's not too powerful if you don't start out with it. If there's only like three on the field and you got to go and get them, once you get a hold of them, you can take some people out and people are fighting over them, I'm okay with that. But when everyone starts out with them, you can shoot across the map, you're just sitting there, dancing across a flat surface, trying to shoot each other in the head, and it's fucking boring. <clears throat> when I actually practice, I'm not awful with it, but even when I'm okay with it, it's still fucking boring. You don't use grenades, you don't use vehicles, you don't use any other weapons, dual wielding is made obsolete, and just fucking... I hate Team BRs. I hate it. I just do. I liked the DMR. The DMR, I feel, is more skill-based. You can use it at longer distances. It's all about getting that sweet headshot, that pop, and it goes through their head. Just like, just getting that headshot is just such a great feeling. But with the BR, they're just spamming it. They're just like, brr, 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 right around your head, and they spam the shit out of it. And there's no, uh, there's no drawback, because with the DMR, you have that bloom. And the bloom's not, I, I think the bloom should be more like it is the sniper rifle, where if you do spam it, you get really punished, but you get punished a little bit for spamming it. The BR, you just don't. They just spam the shit out of it, and you die at medium range when an assault rifle should take you out. I mean, not assault rifles in Halo 2, well, we'll get to that, because technically, there are assault rifles in some of the Halo 2 levels now, but, but the submachine gun is useless. Uh, shotgun is semi-useful, rocket launcher is semi-useful, plasma, brute plasma rifles are both fucking useless when the BR is, is, is starting weapon. The plasma pistol is about the only thing that's useful if you can hit, if you can hit them with it and then get that headshot off before they spam the shit out of you, which is up in the air. <clears throat> and, I, I mean, I played a Valhalla stage, uh, on Halo 3, and Halo 3 has some of that fixed, but not all of it. And no one used Warthogs, no one used Ghosts. They were just sitting in the middle of the level, spamming the BR. And it is broken. It's broken. I saw a Halo 5 uh, de uh, development video, and they were talking about how if everybody zooms in with the new weapons, and I'll get to that, it would break the game if you had to play like that. Uh, and I don't think they did. I've been playing that beta a little bit, and I'll, I'll get to that next. But, but if everybody has to use the BR, then the game's broken. It just is, and unfortunately, Halo 2, as much as people love it, and they, and I love it on some levels, but never starting out with the BR. I always like Classic Slayer, starting out, except on big levels, like Coagulation, I have no problem with the BR starting out, because you can't fucking hit anybody unless you start out with it. I know that's going to piss people off, and that's, and that's fine, it's your opinion. If you love starting out with BRs and dancing back and forth on flat services and spamming it, that's... You know, that's your thing, and you're going to say I'm trash, and maybe I am, because I, I used to not be, but even when I was good, even when I was like a 40 on Lone Wolves in Halo 3, and yeah, that's fucking hard to do. Um, <laughs> even then, I was annoyed by it. 
But aside from the things that were bad about uh, Halo 2 and 3, which they still, they just cut and pasted those engines in. They didn't fix some of the stuff about it, because Halo 1 is online now. They have a list just for Halo 1. And they had to stick medals and stuff in it, because they didn't have, like, medals that displayed before when you killed people. Uh, not all of them, anyway, to my knowledge. It's been a long time since I played a LAN of Halo 1, but I don't remember them getting, uh, giving out assists and stuff like that. And they do now, and all that works. All that works perfectly. In Halo 2 and 3, they had a bad problem with assist not working. You'd shoot someone, get their shields down, and someone else gets a headshot, no assists, no credit. And it's it, that was annoying. But that all works perfectly in uh, Halo CE now, because they had to add that in, in for just for this online. Whereas Halo 2 and 3, they just cut and pasted it. Now, that's excluding Halo 2 anniversary levels. There are six levels that are redone in HD. Off the top of my head, they're Lockout, uh, Sanctuary, uh, Sanctuary, uh, shit, what's Ascension? I don't know, I don't think that's the original name for it, but Ascension, the, the, and now it's, uh, I don't know the new name, I don't remember it, uh, but the one with the two towers in it, in that middle section where the, you get the rocket launcher and it boosts you up, uh, Ascension, and I can't remember if that's the Halo 4 name for it, or whatever, it doesn't matter, um, and like three other levels, uh, I think, uh, da -da -da -da, Coagulation has a redo too, those are not cut and paste uh, Halo 2 multiplayer. Number one, there's a fucking assault rifles in it. Those weren't in Halo 2 at all. They cut those out and put them back in Halo 3. The uh, motion detector actually works like it does in Halo 4, and I don't remember if it had it in Reach, where you could tell if they're above or below you and the arrows are on it. Uh, that's not in Halo 2. And uh, obviously they look pretty. They're redone in HD. The levels are constructed differently. And they also have a mode on Bloodline, I guess a couple other versions, I don't know, the, uh, I guess, um, is it Terminal? Whatever the one with the train is in it, I think they redid that, I don't know if I played in it or not, I, I think I have. But anyway, that would work for Gun Goose also, and Gun Goose is where they take Mongoose, or Mongeese, which weren't in Halo 2 also, and stick guns on the front of them, and you just run around and steal flags and shoot them, and it's really fun, like, I really enjoyed that, and that's a new game type, that's, that's really cool that they added that to this, because before they had Rocket Race, and that was fun, but in this, you can actually kill people, and it's, it's interesting, it's, uh, if you haven't played Gun Goose, I wish they make its own list, and they need to put that in Halo 5, because holy shit, that's fun, and you also have, uh, just Team Slayer, and for some reason, Halo 4 is not in that list, but 1, 2, and 3 in the Anniversary are. And a SWAT, SWAT from Halo 1, a 2, 2 Anniversary, and 4. I don't know why 3 isn't in that, because they have Guardian. Guardian, oh, I played Guardian today. Or, yeah, today, and uh, I hadn't I hadn't played Guardian in so long, and I just fell right back into that, because Halo 3, I played the most of. I played the most of that online. I mean, me... And my current wife, but then girlfriend's relationship was strained because I played it so much. And I'm not bragging about that. That's awful. And, I mean, I was young and whatever. And every time a new Halo comes out, she gets annoyed. That's a different issue altogether. Oh, just playing Guardian again. I know, yeah, you pop in Halo 3 and blah, blah, blah. But barely anyone's on it. And everybody who's on it is insanely good. And it's really hard to get kills for someone like me who's, like, a moderate player. It was, it was, it was, fu it was fun. It, was fel it felt good. I got a hold of the, the gravity hammer, which is useless on most stages, but that level was designed for the gravity hammer. You just get a hold of that, and you go into the little corners of the bottom of the elevator room, and you know someone's coming down that path. You can see their dot, and you're like, oh, here they come. They walk through that door, and you're like, wham! And then they come around the corner on the other side, you're like, wham! Double kill. Oh, that feels so good. I haven't done that in so long. And let's face it, most levels, the gravity hammer is useless. It was originally meant to be like an anti-vehicle weapon, but once again, DMRs and BRs make any close-range weapon obsolete on big levels. You're just fucked. And I remember in the Halo 3, whenever they first uh, introduced that, they had that uh, trailer where the guy is on Last, er, Last Resort? Yeah, Zanzibar is the original one. Last Resort, and they're coming through the windmill, and that guy stops him with the hammer in like mid jump and just fucks the warthog up that never happens it never happens the lag um or whatever like i don't i've never hit that i've never stopped a warthog with a gravity hammer ever 
and I've tried it. I've tried it a lot. I've tried it doing it right as it hit me. I tried to do it like two seconds before it hit me, one second. I tried it over and over, and the only way it works is if you're not online. Like the timing is required to do it is so precise that you cannot do it online. Or if you have, you just have to be lucky. The one thing I did use a hammer on is on Rat Race, which is in this on the Halo 3 list, but I've yet to get matched up on it because it's a big team map, and apparently it's just really hard to get matched up with big team games. Uh, when you get the hammer from the middle and you hide behind that uh, median, you hide behind that chunk of median, and you wait for a warthog to drive by, and you whack it off the edge and it falls off a cliff, That's oh, that's oh that feels good. I can't wait to play on Rat Race and do that again, just whack someone off the edge. So if they have a gravity hammer, and they haven't done this in a while, they haven't done it, they didn't do it, they didn't do it in Reach, and they didn't do it in Halo 4, but have a level kind of like Rat Race, if not a complete remake of Rat Race, where you can get a gravity hammer, and you can run to a certain point, and a vehicle drives by, you can knock it off the edge, and you get the kills for it. That's, that needs to happen. And the rockets were pretty close to that area too, so you could knock them off with a rocket launcher. It's, uh, like, I love tactic like that. I love it in Halo when you look at a situation and you can approach it from like eight different angles, which I once again brings me back to the BR because that kind of ruins that whole motif. And you guys, oh well, I'll just stand here and we'll dance back and forth and shoot each other in the head. <laughs> that's awful. But I know that's okay. I know some people are like that's not what happens. You know, you hide behind stuff. There's grenades. I'm like, yeah, I know. That's all that stuff. But most of the time, it comes down to who can see each other first and who can shoot. Who can shoot someone in the head first, and that's fine, I guess. But uh, it's so annoying when you just see two groups of people dancing back and forth across the map, shooting each other, and the reticles aren't even red, and it's not meant to be used like that. But if they're lucky enough, that spread will hit the right spot and right through the head. And the other thing, and this has been in Halo since Halo 2, I think, that annoys the shit out of me, is the auto-target. I think I can turn it off, but for every weapon, except the sniper rifle, and occasionally other weapons, I I don't mind it being on, but I hate it whenever i am got someone's shields down, and their buddy jumps across, and my reticle just follows them. And I'm just like, no, no, don't follow that guy, and then I'm dead, and it's flat. I don't know whether I dislike that or like that or not. It just depends. Because most situations, I guess I like it, except with a sniper rifle. I want no... I don't want the sniper rifle to follow the person at all. I want to just line up that headshot and blow their head off. And not have to deal with it auto-correcting for me. Uh, automatic weapons, that's fine. But not, not the sniper rifle. So I wish I could do that. I know that's an, a really big nitpick. but So yeah... Uh, Master Chief Collection, um, once you can get through all the bullshit, and there's a lot of bullshit as far as installing it goes, once you can get through all the, once you can get through all the fucking bullshit, it's fine as far as the campaign goes, and the matchmaking is still a little wonky. I'm hoping they fix that, but I also don't like how you don't, they don't let you stay in a lobby. Uh, you automatically get kicked out, and that's annoying. But this isn't meant to be super competitive. This is just supposed to be a love letter to the Halo series. And once it's actually working, and I know it's been over a month, I'm not making excuses. As I said in the first, like, ten minutes of this, it fucking pissed me off. It wasted my time. Me and my brother couldn't play together. Three Dozer came over. It wouldn't match make very well. We could only play, like, two games before we went and saw The Hobbit. And I don't know if I'm not going to... If I get on a Hobbit tangent, that's going to last forever, so I'm not going to do that. Is it worth $60? For a Halo fan, yes. Is it worth the bullshit? Oh, it's hard, but I'm gonna have to say yes. It's barely worth the bullshit if you can get through the bullshit. I mean, I played Halo since 2001. I've been playing this shit for 13 years, since I was 17, since I was in high school. If you can get it to work, if you don't run into so many problems that you can't just, you just don't want to deal with it, I get that. I almost thought about returning it and just said it didn't work. Because I was getting, uh, I was seeing reports online that uh, Best Buy and Walmart were letting people return it because they couldn't get it to install properly. Wow, like that sucks. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what I probably would have. I was actually getting uh, about, I was about ready to do that. I was gonna go buy Destiny instead. I was I was about to say fuck this and just go get Destiny. Speaking of cheap ass games, I found a uh, Titanfall for like twenty five bucks. I didn't get it though because I bought a GameCube. So before I talk about Halo 5 Beta, I got a GameCube today. Yay! My Wii actually stopped playing discs. And I have a Wii U, and that's what I play my Wii games on. 
But I had nothing to play my GameCube games, because I really wanted to start a game of Mario Sunshine and Metroid Prime, because I never beat Metroid Prime all the way through. And uh, I couldn't. So now I have a GameCube. I got it for 20 bucks. Uh, Crimson's grandpa paid for it with his cash he gave me. Thank you, sir, or Crimson's grandpa. Halo 5 Beta. Halo 5 The Guardians Beta. How is that? All right. So let's get through the not game section. They have some unlockables, which I'm don't. I'd be nice if they were unlocked in Halo 5 when I buy it next year. Probably not. But it's nice to get stuff for playing. The games match up pretty quickly, huh? <laughs> quicklier, quicklier? Wow. That's a new word. Quicklier. The games match up more quickly than on MCC sometimes, which is blows my mind. Once it starts matching up, though, you can't exit out. And once the game's over, it does keep you in the lobby. But if you exit out of the lobby before it starts matchmaking, you get like a minute and a half black screen and little little squares in the corner that I guess is your loading indication. I know it's a beta and all that stuff. It's just, it just kind of sucks that I have to go through that to play it, but that's expected. You can't, you can't get around that with a beta. In-game. Okay, so before I even talk about in-game, I gotta talk about all the extra shit. You only get two levels. One of them's midship. It's called Truth Now. Oh, I love midship, so this is awesome. But before I talk about how playing online is, I have to talk about the armor abilities. I know some of you aren't playing the beta. I may not even looked at anything up on Halo 5. I only looked a little bit up. I didn't know about the armor abilities till yesterday. I know you're probably thinking armor abilities. Oh, some people are really hardcore classic. I liked the armor abilities, uh, some more than others. Everyone had a different one, but it did kind of make the game a little uneven. I say a little because everyone can get one, but made the game a little uneven, it felt. In this one, you have like six armor abilities, and everybody has them. Everybody has an ar six armor abilities. What are these armor abilities? One of them is scoping. I know what you're thinking. Scoping, that you could do that in Halo 1 through 4 and Reach, and the ODST, and the PC versions. Yeah, you could do that, but you couldn't do it with all weapons. In this one, it's not just you zoom in with binoculars. You can zoom in with all weapons, even automatic weapons. And it doesn't really break the game as much as you think it would, like zooming in with an assault rifle. Because you can zoom in with an assault rifle now. And it's relatively accurate, but it doesn't zoom in as much as, say, a pistol. And it doesn't zoom in as much as, say, a battle rifle or a DMR. And it doesn't bloom out either. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because sometimes I like that area of bullets flying at people. And it's not, like, I've zoomed in with the assault rifle, and it... It makes it easier to shoot people from further away, but it doesn't, like, outdo the BR or anything. They did a really good job of balancing that. Because I remember in the development video, they were talking about, and I talked about this earlier, how if everybody has to be zoomed in to play competitively, it breaks the game. And that would be true if this were the case, but it's not. As soon as someone shoots you, though, you zoom out, and it totally fucks everything up. It's really interesting to see you to be able to zoom in with a submachine gun or an assault rifle. And yeah, the submachine gun's back, but it's not like, um... It's not like dual wielding or anything. It's sort of like the the submachine gun was in ODST. In ODST, they had that silent submachine gun. You kind of have that in this one, and it has a wider spread than the assault rifle. It's like um, a closer weapon. It's somewhere between like an assault rifle and a shotgun, which is kind of neat because it works better in different situations. And there is no shotgun on that level. There's only a sword, so... That's kind of interesting that they stuck that in there. The DMR and the BR are both in there, and they operate mostly the same. Uh, I love the DMR more still. The BR is not as broken um, because you can zoom in with all weapons. So it really does even things out. Like, you, someone has a BR and it's like, I'm just going to spam this button. Oh, shit, I'm getting fucking shot by assault rifle, like, at long, medium range, and I need to hide. So that's interesting. And the, oth the other armor abilities are you've got... Clamber, which is if you peek your head up over a ledge, you can now climb up, climb up if you hold the jump button in. That's really cool because you almost make that jump sometimes and you just fall and it fucks everything up. In this version, you fall. Uh, you don't fall. Sorry. In this version, you don't fall. You just grab the ledge and you climb up. And it doesn't let you shoot when you cl clamber, so you really have to plan for... Uh, I've, I've snuck up on people. I've assassinated people by clambering up because they thought they were safe, and they were not. I just... Ah. Uh, 
But that brings me to my next one, which is charge. So you sprint just like normal in Halo 4. It's not, it's, I guess it's an armor ability, but I always hated that sprint was an armor ability in Reach. It was like, you can run. I'm like, why can't everyone run? run? You can run if you want. Uh, I used it a lot, though, because it was nice having people not be able to get away from you. Uh, but yeah, the sprint actually goes into two separate armor abilities. One is charge, which I have mixed feelings about. So when you get built up to your maximum sprint, you'll have like little wind uh, marks that go past you. You can hit melee, and you'll charge into a person and take out their shields and go past them so they have a hard time getting a beat on you and meleeing you back. Or you can slide, and slide doesn't hit the person, doesn't hurt them, but you, I think it goes a little bit further, and it's faster, and you can shoot while you're doing it. So you can slide like in with a shotgun, or slide in with a sword, and just take fuckers out. So that's really neat. I haven't done it with a sword yet, and I, I don't think there's a shotgun on either of those two levels, so I don't know. I use slide sometimes. You also have uh, your actual armor ability button that you have uh, in the other games. You use to uh, use your uh, boost pack, which you had in Halo 4, except you can boost in any direction now. Backward, forward, left, right. And it just gives you that extra oomph to get away from someone. Like, you're getting shot and you're just like... Phew. I heard someone complaining about the sprint and the slide and the charge and the boost uh, online. They are like, this OP is the game. This breaks it. I can get across the level in no time. I'm like, well, so? You can get across the level in no time. Okay. So what? Like, an Unreal, you can basically cover the entire level in, like, three seconds. Not literally. But this, and this is different, though. Like, you can't shoot when you're you're sprinting. You can't shoot when you're charging. You... I don't know if you can shoot when you're boosting, but it's really hard if you can. Because you're going so fast. It's not like you're a fucking uh, race car going across the map. You're just... You can just get out of danger. Like, they're mad because if you get that first shot off in some of the other Halos, you're going to kill that person. You will kill that person if you get that first shot off with a BR. And in this game, that's not true. I can get into cover. I can recover. Then you can throw grenades at that person. There's lots of stuff you can do that even if you get that first couple of shots off, you can still kill that person. They're still at a disadvantage. They still, You still have other teammates who can come in and clean up. It doesn't OP or break the game. I really like it. It gives you escape options. It gives you defense options, which is something that Halo has always been about. In a lot of other shooting games, it's you can just kill people and camp and blah, blah, blah. In Halo, you can take some damage, you can find cover, and you can figure out your next move. Whereas in, like, say, COD bra, you can't. So, blah. And bl I don't know. Like, one of them had, like, the other armor ability is Ground Pound, which is the weirdest one that I've seen. If you jump up into the air and you're high enough off the ground, <coughs> you can charge up a move where you soar into the ground and punch it. And it sends out a shockwave that kills people. I don't know how much damage it does per se, because I've only seen someone kill with it a couple times. I've yet to kill with it, because people move around. You can't just... And you, you have to sit there and charge it for, like, three plus seconds. It And you freeze in midair when you do it, so you're really open. So it has to do a lot of damage, because you're taking a huge risk doing it. Uh, and I've barely... I've only seen two people get kills with it. Uh, and that's if you hold melee when you uh, jump in the air. so Or no, you hold crouch when you jump in the air. It's it's weird. So that's all the armor abilities. But speaking of weird, the control scheme in Halo 5 is really fucking weird. So in Halo 2 to 3, they started reloading with the shoulder buttons. Which was weird. Which was really weird. But you got used to it. It wasn't that big of a change. Per se, like I got used to it really quickly. I, I, I surrendered. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to reload with the shoulder button so I can reload each one at one at a time. Uh, by the way, if you use uh, Halo 4 control scheme in Halo 3, you can't reload your left weapon unless you're empty, which I wish they would put in a patch to where if I hit reload, it just reloads both guns, like in Halo 2. Just, uh, it's annoying. Anyway. Sorry, my wife got a soda stream for Christmas, so I've been making my own soda. It's pretty it's pretty awesome. It's not as sugary as normal soda. It's like a little bit sugary than like a Dr. Pepper 10. The control scheme in Halo 5, the default one. I mean, I, they have one that's literally just called Halo 4, and that's what I use. But from 3 to Reach. So from Halo 3 to Halo Reach, they changed some stuff back to the way it was in Halo 1 and 2, but some of the stuff kept it the same way in Halo 3. So, for instance, they changed the melee to RB, which was kind of weird, but 
kind of not because you can aim when you're trying to melee now with RB. So I needed that because I, 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 I hated it whenever I took my thumb off of the uh, aiming right stick and then I miss someone because I'm not aiming, aiming at them and doesn't home in very well on Halo Reach. Like they back the homing off. And they changed, uh, and they changed again to Halo Four. Halo Four B is crouch, and you can toggle toggle it on and off, which I have grown to like. I got used to Halo 4's control scheme because I wanted to be, I wanted to play the game the way it was designed. Did the same thing for Reach after I don't know, like one, like six months before Halo Four came out, I switched control schemes on Reach, so I could play Halo Four the way it's supposed to be played. And I did, and I got used to it, and now I'm used to Halo 4 control scheme. And Halo 5, zooming in has always been clicking right stick in Halo. It's never changed. From CEA, to, or from Combat Evolved to Halo 4, it's never changed. And this one crouches clicking right stick. And it used to be clicking left stick before it was press B to toggle it on and off. I can't play like that. Zooming in is left trigger, like in Unreal, which... I don't know. Like, it's weird. It's really, really, really weird. And I don't know why they felt it was necessary to change it. The Halo 4 control scheme that I've been using works fine. It's it, it's fine. It doesn't need to be... It doesn't need to be changed. It just doesn't. Halo 3, it needed to be changed because you had two weapon reloads. Halo 4's changes were, were good. They were fine. Crouching, toggle, and everything. This uh this change is bad. It's just bad. It just I don't know. And I and I, it's not like I can get used to it right now. They don't have that option. I don't think in Halo 4. I can check. I can check in MCC. I can check in Halo 4 see if they have a control scheme that's like that, but I don't think so. So it's not like I can get used to it like I did with Reach cuz Reach and 4s were pretty similar. But they have a they have a mode that's just called Halo 4 as far as the controls go. I'm just using that. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm not adapting again. I'm tired of adapting controls. It's not like in Halo 3 where it's actually impossible to play the game right without playing it the way it's supposed to be played. Even though I'm playing it right now. I just have to empty out my left weapon or whatever if I am dual wielding, which I don't do that often, but I do do it like once or twice a game. So yeah, aside from all of that shit, aside from everything that's weird and new, how is it? It's fun. Like, it's fun. I like the ability to defend yourself. And you, we've, we've been doing this for a while with armor abilities, but having the ability to duck out of the way, it doesn't make the person who's attacking you any less likely to... I mean, it does take, make them a little less likely to kill you, and but that's the point. It lets you build up a defense. And it's all it's all mobility. It's just moving around the map. It's not... And you can still get trapped, and you can still get cornered, and you can still... Do everything, but it's just, if someone shoots you from behind, you have a little bit of an ability to get away. Uh, or to regroup and to throw some grenades out and get some distance. I like that. I like the ability to defend yourself. And you know what? Everybody who hates that, everyone's pissy and like, fuck this, you can move across the map, blah, 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 blah. They're going to have a classic mode. You know they're going to. You know they're going to have a mode that has no armor abilities, that have default loadouts, none of that shit. None of that shit will be in it. They'll have a classic mode. It will be ranked if they do rankings again. I don't know if they will. They didn't in Halo 4, they just, I felt that uh, was one of the weaknesses of Halo 4 as multiplayer, but aside from that, they may put Halo 4 as a list on MCC and then actually have rankings on it, and that would be interesting, that would kind of, I don't know if that would quote-unquote fix things, because then everyone buys the Master Chief Collection, but, so, Halo 5 beta, not that many levels, matchmaking works okay, I like it, I like it, I like the changes, I have, I actually have no problem with the changes. And if I hadn't watched that video before I played, it wouldn't have been, uh, I wouldn't have no, I would have had no idea what I was doing. Other things that they should add to it, number one, when you die, you see how you get killed from the other person's perspective, and you can't see whether you get an assist, you can't see whether your grenade actually killed someone, sometimes, sometimes you can. And you have no idea what's going on in the level when you're seeing that playback. One of the things they need to do is take that video and make it tiny in the corner of the screen, or make what's really going on. Uh, make what's really going on scrollable so I can see what other character or other people on my team are doing. I would really like to be able to see what the hell's going on. I'd like to be able to know if I'm getting a kill whenever that's going on. I'd like to know if I'm getting an assist. You just can't tell. Like, with kills, you can look at your total and see if it went up. 
like if my grenade went off and killed that dude or whatever, uh, or if he accidentally got shot by his teammate and gave me the kill. I like to know what's going on in the level right after I die, whether it's seeing my dead body or whatever. But I can't, it doesn't do that. So th- th- they need to fix that. They need to fix the they or they need to do something with that. I don't like it. The other thing I want to fix is the charge. I I've hit people before. Or, or I can't really tell if I'm hitting people sometimes. Like, I'll, I'll feel it vibrate, and I can't tell if I'm impacting or it's just the act of the charge. And you can't always quite see, so I'd like to have an indicator on the screen if I hit somebody. You also should put an indicator on the screen when you hit your full velocity of sprint, uh, the buttons to do uh, charge and slide, so you know what's going on. Uh, I mean, I know, but when people are playing it for the first time, and I'm sure in the campaign they'll have a tutorial about charging and sliding, and you'll have to use a charge to get through a door or something. I don't know. How are the graphics? The graphics look good. I they look up to stuff with the Master Chief collection. I don't think I think Midship looks really good, but I, there's nothing in it that really like makes me go, "Wow, that looks amazing!" And I'm soaking my pants in semen. Like no, that, nothing like that's going on. But it looks good. It doesn't look bad or anything. It looks good. It looks like an Xbox One game. It, I'm sure Campaign will have some really cool graphics. I mean, Halo 4 was beautiful. That game was fucking beautiful. So I fully expect Halo 5 Guardians to look just as good, if not better. And so far, I mean, from what we've seen, it looks really good. E3 is going to be awesome this year. We're going to have Halo 5 Guardian stuff. We're going to have Zelda Wii U. We may get a new Mario announced. We may get... Uh, we'll see more on Star Fox. Well, there'll be a ton of shit. So that's really all I've got to say about the Master Chief Collection and Halo 5 Beta. If you can get through the bullshit on Master Chief Collection, you should pick it up. If you have an Xbox One, is it a reason to buy an Xbox One? No, it's not. It's fun. If you're a really big Halo fan, you'll love it. If you're not, and you want to catch up on the series, and you already have an Xbox One, here's what you do. Okay, I'm going to give you a step-by-step on how to get Master Chief Collection to fucking work on your Xbox One if it doesn't just work. Number one, it's going to take a shit ton of time to download. It just is. You need to hardwire that shit, hardwire your modem or your router into your Xbox One. Don't try to do it wirelessly, it'll take even longer. Number one, disconnect from the internet and download your disk separately. Do not go into the game and have it and install the update. Don't fucking touch the update. That will just fuck things up if it's... And you'll you'll probably know that if you're just trying to do it like, oh, I'm not going to use any advice and just do it, you'll, you'll find out. You'll find out. This is for if you're having trouble with it. After you install the hard disk, and this, and unless you're getting it digitally, in which case you're just downloading it anyway, and this is moot, but if you're downloading the hard disk, install it separately, disconnected from the internet. Reconnect to the internet, sign in, restart your console. Probably unplug it, or maybe make it go to sleep and turn it back on and re-sign in. Then, go to your 18 gig update that pops up on the screen when you turn it on, and download that. And don't touch it. Don't do anything. Don't do anything with it or it will fuck up. Just let it do its thing. You go on another console and watch Netflix. Don't try to do it on that console because it might fuck it up. And once that's done, unplug it, restart it. Maybe even unplug your modem and router if you can't match up games. Then you can finally get into some games. You might see you don't have the privileges to play the game. Might pop up. You might have other prompts when you go into multiplayer. Give it a couple minutes. If it still does it, restart your console. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. If you're willing to go through all of that bullshit, and you might not have it. I've heard reports of people installing it, just take some time, and it's done. Cool. If you can do that, awesome. You had a lot better time than I did. I had a fucking... Ah, ugh, ah, ugh. So if you're willing to put up with that, go get it. If not, don't go get it. I would honestly, if you're not crazy about a physical version like I am, I really like collecting stuff, except especially Halo, don't get don't get the physical version. If you don't mind a digital version, you download that shit, because Christ. Christ fucking uh, balls. So that's all I have to say about both of those. I thought about doing a nerdcast on the mo- my favorite movies of the year. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it now. I'm, I'll, I'll go through them really quickly. I, I'm going to do this in 10 minutes. I want to keep this around an hour. I don't want to go over too much. From the bottom to the top. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Amazing Spider-Man 2 is good. I liked it more than the first movie. I liked it maybe than the Raimi movies. I know that technically maybe Spider-Man 2 is a better movie overall, but I think that Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a better Spider-Man movie overall. 
I think it feels more like the comic books. There's all sorts of storylines going on. As I said before, I acknowledge his weaknesses, but his strengths are so much that I just can't, I can't ignore them. He's working with science to improve his web shooters. He does that all the time in the comics, where he has to, he goes up against the enemy and he can't figure them out. And he has to use his scientific knowledge to try to find a weakness. I love it. I love Gwen Stacy. Isn't a fucking bumping a log like Mary Jane was. She actually helps him. The ending with. The character death. I'm not gonna give it away if you haven't seen it, or you haven't read the comics, because I know I know you're out there. I know there are people out there who haven't done either of those. <clears throat> but the death at the end was handled really well, and I don't mind the upbeat ending. A lot of people were like, "No, they should have left it with him being sad." Come on, guys. It, 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 kids are gonna go see this. I know the Dark Knight kind of did that, but at least even Dark Knight ended on a little bit of upbeat note. If it was just Peter Parker on his knees, no, ah! like that would have been awful. So no. It's fine. If they don't make a third one, it does bring that movie down a little bit because you won't see the Green Goblin come back as that Green Goblin. You won't see the Rhino actually do something. That'll suck. But I still liked it. It's like number five. Tied with the next movie on my list for number five, Godzilla. Oh, I love Godzilla. I love Godzilla. I've seen all the movies. I've seen most of them both in English and Japanese. I hated the 98 movie like most people did. I hated it when I was 13. I went into that theater and I came out pissed. Godzilla got killed with missiles. Missiles! Ah! Not to mention the design, not to mention the ripping off Jurassic Park, not to mention that's a lot of fish, not to mention the shitty characters, not to mention, not to mention, not to mention. I could do a whole video on G98, but I don't have to because a million other people have done it already. So fuck it. Uh, on that same note, I'm thinking about doing something called uh, Intoxa Narration, where it's basically like riff tracks Except we're getting wasted, and I actually film us. I don't just do the audio. I actually film us getting wasted and watching a movie, and you can play it as a group of friends getting wasted and watching movies. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, but G98 would definitely be on that list. The new Godzilla is fucking awesome. Is it amazing? It's good. It's good. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's good. It's a great Godzilla movie, but it's a good movie. Brian Cranston's awesome, and spoiler alert, I'm gonna go ahead and spoil this, he fucking dies, like, halfway through the movie. Bad move. Bad, 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 bad move. At first, I didn't, I wasn't that shocked by it. I mean, I was shocked, but I wasn't that disappointed by it, because I was like, oh, Aaron Taylor Johnson can carry this movie. He was kick-ass. He's great in that. Nope. He's just, I don't know if he's just not written well. Like, I don't know. Because he's a good actor. I've seen him act really well before, but it was just like, I'm a soldier, here's my things I gotta do. So, yeah, it, the middle of the movie is a little dull, we have a cock block moment with Godzilla fighting a Mudo, that sucked, but everything else about it, Godzilla looks great, the effects are done amazingly, the end fight is, ama is great, I just wish it was a little less people on the ground-ish, and a little more classic cinematic, with seeing Godzilla in a monster fight, there's a little less of, oh, I'm looking at the monsters from the ground, like, I liked that, that was cool, I, I was one of the few people that thought Cloverfield did some really interesting things. Number four, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, I guess. Didn't know if that was going to be any good. It was really funny. It was really great. It felt more like a Star Wars movie. Than, uh, it felt more like a Star Wars movie than the prequels did. I love Rocket Raccoon in that. It's not exactly like the comics, but I think it's better than the comics. If you're a big Guardians fan, you're like, fuck that. That's not my Guardians. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whatever. I I just like the movie. I love it. And if you don't like it because of that, you're like a half of a percent of comic book fans who gives a shit about that and they can't just enjoy it for being a good movie. I mean, I get it, but whatever. It was awesome. I tweeted whenever uh, I got, came out of the movie. I just watched a raccoon cry over a twig and nobody was laughing. Nobody thought this was a funny thing. That's how well this movie. That's how well this movie portrayed Rocket and Groot. It was great. It was great. I don't want to talk about the negatives. The t negatives don't matter because the goods, like the negatives, are like two percent of the movie, and the positives are like ninety eight percent. I don't have time to talk about the negatives, so fuck it. Guardians, Gal Guardians of the Galaxy is awesome. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Three is X Men: Days of Futures Past. I love First Class. I like. A ton of the X-Men movies. I've seen every single X-Men movie in theaters. This one was no different. It was great. Jennifer Lawrence becoming this giant star really helped propel the movie, I guess, to the box office, but also made the character more mystique-oriented, which is something I think I wanted to see for a long time. 
I remember when First Class came out, and I realized there was a bunch of continuity fuck ups, and I was like, ah, I don't know, I don't know if I care because it's such a good movie. Like First Class is so good. It, it I love the, per- the period it takes place in. I, lo- I like that Beast is a bigger character. I, I just liked it. I loved it. I loved First Class. It was the best X Men movie made up until this movie. But I noticed the fuck ups. I noticed the continuity fuck ups. I was like, you know what? They should make a Days of Futures Past movie, and then use that to make up. Uh, all the all the mistakes that they made before with Brett Ratner's movie and blah 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 blah. Like they should do that. They should fix the timeline, and that would explain the the disc the that would explain the continuity errors. That would that would get rid of X Men Last Stand with all those characters dying. That would be great. And I think I was telling Three Dozer about it. I was like, yeah, but that'll never happen. Like that's a great pipe dream, and that's what happened, and that's what they did. And I couldn't be happier. Like I can't believe they did that. I can't fucking believe they did that. And it's great. It's awesome so yes that's great Hugh Jackman isn't the main character even though he's in it and that's great like they took Wolverine made it like Wolverine acts like he does in the comics it's like he's not the main character he's part of the team yes that's what they should have done from the beginning I understand that they needed him to carry the first movie but then the second movie and then the third movie and then they had the spin-offs and it's just like I like Wolverine believe me he was my favorite character in the 90s show but for fuck's sake, let's focus on some other characters. I'm not even a big Cyclops fan, and I wish Cyclops got some more time. I'm sick of him being just sidelined. Like, please, just have Cyclops in the movie doing something. Just being a leader. Like, having the team work together, fighting a group of other mutants or something. And they haven't really done that except in The Last Stand, which is one of the high notes of the movie. And they kind of did that in First Class, though. But it wasn't, like, the main team and that... That was a little distracting, but whatever. So yes, Days of Futures Past is awesome. Go see it. I just, that's just like, what is that, my, my catchphrase now? Go see it. Uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier. I didn't know if this was going to be really good. I don't know why. I said the same thing about Captain America, the first Avenger. I didn't know if that was going to be any good. And they're both really good movies, but Winter Soldier is so much better. And the Winter Soldier is a really cool enemy. Uh, the guy who uh, reviewed it on IGN said it was the best villain since Loki. Ah, uh, he's not, but he's still really cool. He's a badass. The The big reveal that he's Bucky, spoiler alert. I already knew that because I knew who the Winter Soldier was in the comics, so. Spoiler alert, it's fucking Bucky. So, it's a political thriller. Nick Fury busts out some spy weapons. Scarlett Johansson is crazy hot. Again. God damn it. Falcon's in it. Falcon is portrayed more or less like he is in the Ultimate Universe, which is fine. You don't need him in a white and red outfit that looks goofy, and it does look goofy. I'm sorry, Falcon fans, that suit looks fucking stupid. It looked, it, it's fine. It's fine for the uh, Silver Age, and I read comics with goofy looking costumes all the time. I have no pro- problem with it. My favorite Green Lantern is Alan Scott, and he has the goofiest outfit of all time, but I love it. But I still acknowledge it's goofy. <laughs> so, what's uh, what's the number one movie of the year for me? Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Dawn of the Planet of the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes <laughs> is great. It's it's better than the first movie in the series. It's a great re- it's a great reboot sequel or prequel to the original series. Still it uh, just does such great things with the characters and setting up this rivalry between Koba and Caesar and Caesar trying to understand humans and setting up what will be the war that ends humanity and it's it's done really well gary oldman's done really well does uh gary oldman acts great in it the just everybody in it's great there's nothing there's nothing bad about that movie i literally cannot criticize anything about it like there are terrifying moments in it the apes look fucking real i know we said that about rise of the planet of the apes but Dawn, they look fucking real. They look real. Koba looks scary. And there were moments where the apes just didn't look real in the first one, except for Caesar, who always looked like he was there. I get it. They The technology wasn't there yet. But it's there in this one. They have, like, hundreds, sometimes, like, a thousand apes on screen at once. You keep forgetting that they're CG. You just keep forgetting. It's great, and you feel bad at the end because you know that Caesar has to become this war leader, and he doesn't want to, but he has to protect his people, and it just... And there's some parts that are so hard to watch because you know someone's going to pay for this. You know that awful things are going to happen as a result of characters taking certain paths, but it just... 
It's so good. It's my favorite. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is my favorite movie of the year. This is the only movie that I say not only should you go see, but you must see. Like, if you see anything this year, if you see any modern movie that came out this year, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is it. It's fucking awesome. You need to see it. That's really it. It's been an hour and four minutes, and it'll be shorter than that when it's on there because I have a bunch of shit to edit out. But yeah, uh, that's all. That's that's it for the second episode, and I hope you enjoyed hearing me ramble about video games and movies. I hope to have some people on eventually. I hope to maybe even do that intoxic narration thing. I thought about maybe doing an episode on New Year's Eve because we'll be drunk anyway. We'll see. We'll see what's up. We'll see what's up. I don't know. It, if I do Intoxic Narration, it'll be on this channel. I'll put it up on the blog. Uh, speaking of Godzilla, I put up an article on uh, Examiner under uh, Jake Harris, which is my real name. Yeah, so just uh, – it's called The Future of Godzilla. The blog It's up on the blog, Trimmer Death, T-R-E-M-O-R, D-E-T-H dot blogspot dot com. There's links. It's the main uh, link that's on the uh, channel page. I'll put it in the description nonetheless. Just check out the blog. I'm putting stuff up on there all the time. I have written stuff. I post the Nerdcast up there. I may have new videos up. So yeah, just uh, thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see your fucking bitch asses uh, next week. Fuck off. <laughs>